Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about putting the new injectors into Renko and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. This week I finally get around to installing the injectors I built a few weeks ago into Renko's Detroit Diesel 471 and we also do a bit of a tune-up. The tune-up is pretty much required because when you change the injectors you touch so many things and throw them a little bit out of calibration but it was worth doing as well just to sort of make sure it's running as well as possible. Adrian also does a tune-up on Mammut at the same time but pretty much the same process. This video starts with Adrian and I pulling an old air-cooled Lister diesel out of one of the oyster farms. We're going to use that engine to run a hydraulic pumps and water pumps, that kind of stuff. So let's pick up there. Here we have an old Lister that we're going to use on Mammut for probably a winch, all sorts of stuff. All right, take it away. <laughs> all right, here we go. Get the machine over. No. Control cable. Right away. Eh? Hey. Goes to the injector pump. Right away. There goes the cover. Yeah. The little digger wasn't quite strong enough to lift it up onto the truck, so we swapped to the bigger one and got it strapped down. Once back at the house, Adrian spent five minutes doing a full rebuild on the Lister, getting it ready for action before we took a punt and headed back out to the trawlers. What are you doing? Changing the thermostat because I'm thinking the wrong type for this engine. Okay. So what sort are you putting in there? One, one with the one that blocks the bypass. I think the one that's in here doesn't block the bypass, so we've got to check and make sure, otherwise we've got other issues. Obviously the first step in this process is to grab a short hose and drink all the coolant out of the header tank. That way you can take the thermostat housing out without leaking. This is got the wrong thermostat in. I don't know quite if you can see. I get the sun in the right spot. Anyway, the new thermostat, which is here in the bag, has a shut off for the bypass. This has no shut off for the bypass. So what happens is when it heats up, it doesn't shut the bypass off and the water just takes a short turn and the engine doesn't get to circulate the water properly. Just a job one to get done so I can run around the river and not worry about it getting hot. So this is the thermostat. I pulled out the differences. So this one is designed to shut off in that hole there. That's the, it doesn't even look like it's been working. Can't see any movement on it because the water's moving around it too much. So right about okay. where my finger is there is Stu, but maybe you can hear him in the background. Now I'm going to poke the thermostat back in here, clean the gasket up, given it's not, this is not the nicest piece of hose I know. Please don't judge. It's just going to get it going so we can run around the river, get it moving around. Because we had some things to get onto Mammut and things to get off Renko, we ended up actually shuffling so that the oyster punt was between the two boats so we could use the crane on board that. Come back. The 
first thing to come off was the little crane. It really needs a sandblast and to be painted with some good epoxy. It really just wasn't designed to be in a marine environment. It turned out that the bearing on the base was a little bit jammed, so we decided to take quite a slow, measured approach to get it off safely. Adrian's got a uh, generator welder that we're going to put on Mammut. Be good for jobs, both power and welding in the field. After this, we're going to lift the uh, engine hatch off, Renko, table and all, given we've got the crane. Otherwise, I would, you know, pull the drawers out of the table, etc. But uh, just let the crane do the hard work today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At this point, Adrian had a few choice words to say to someone who came flying by making a fair bit of wash while we were uh, lifting the table up in the air, but uh, we got there in the end. So, do you do the racks? I usually do, do the racks after I do the valves and everything. Right, okay. Yeah, these are actually fixed to the rocker. Yep. And don't have a valve bridge, but they rock between the two. Gotcha. So then it just levels up. This one? But I don't know where they're at now. That one's pretty tough. Like, Diluting. See that one's down, but the valves are that sort of valve there riding. So they should be open. Yes. Well, the valves should be closed while the injector fires. Yes. So this one's actually yeah nearly too tight. So today, never ever ever in all of my life done a tune up to a set of these. Ah. These are Stu Spanners. Speaking with his the new Detroit expert. Yeah. So if, you think, if it's anyone know, just ask me. See how they go. I'm not um, familiar with the field, so yeah, right. Seriously. Yep. So it's just, like right now. It's actually yeah, it, washing the oil. It's like washing it's... the oil, and it's so I need to come up a bit more. Right. Um, hang on. So you want it to be tight. You want it to be high, and then when you do the lock nut up, it it'll should... come down again. Yep. Yeah. So, It's pretty good access for a regular spanner. I can see why you don't. Yeah, but on some of the that's nice. Yeah, yeah it's cool. just dragging nicely over the top. So originally, it w the injector was too high. Low. Oh, it was, too low. It was down. Sorry. It was starting really early. Right. Although the camshaft is primarily responsible for timing when these injectors fire, by setting the injector height, you are changing that timing very slightly. So it's very much important to have them equally timed, but you can vary the timing based on a specific tuning you want. Time to put the fuel injectors in that I made a couple of videos ago. So fuel lines off, rockers off, get the old injectors out. I start taking the fuel lines off using the special Detroit tool. You can use an ordinary spanner, but this makes it just a little bit easier. Once they're loose, I just take them off the rest of the way by hand. Some will. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they didn't take any force at all. Yeah, it'll be what, Depends this, what one position will, they're this in. This one will be hard. Yeah. See, yeah. I'll show you why. See yeah. how the rocker's right up? Yep. This one will be all right too, because the rockers are close to the level. Close, yeah, so that's got the high point on the cam. Yeah, oh, just there, yeah. a little bit, but that's all right. You can, do, you can push it, but... So we could just take this one out, take the... Yeah, just the shaft out and we'll... Yeah. So, just a retainer oh, bolt, single retainer on each one. Yep, 9 sixteenths. So, as you bring it up, now you've got it loose. Yep. You can go under the back of it. Ah, uh, yep. And now it's up a bit, it'll twist. 
and come away. Get it to come away from the rack. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Right, Let's now see. hit it. Mm, yeah. Quite alright, didn't it? Yeah. But it might but it might be dribbling. It's interesting that you don't even have to support it. it just, no, it doesn't take much, yeah. No. And it looked like it had six holes. It looked like it had six holes, yeah. So you might find you've only got one. Good to field one. test. But that'll be out of fuel now. No, it'll have another shot in. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Interesting. Yeah. Very good. So cylinder one. Yeah. So, like, if you were looking for one that didn't fire and you're out in the field, it'll yeah, really yeah, bad. Yeah, that's the one. You can dump. Oh, look, it's only got two owls. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Down in here, you can see where the fuel rack connects to all the injector racks in order to change the amount of fuel the injectors are delivering. In order to disconnect that, we need to rotate the injector, and in order to rotate it, we need to lift it high enough so that this pin comes out of the cylinder head first. You also need to manually move the fuel rack with your hand in order to guide it out of the injector. Oh, oh look at that. I'm assuming they also get easier as they go along because there's less injectors connected to the rack. Next job is to clean down inside these injector tubes before we put the new ones in. Okay, tubes are cleaned, going to drop the new injectors in and then we do the clamps up to 25 pounds like you said. Adrian starting his 453 again. Purring like a kitten. Sounds good. Start straight away now. Adrian's a happy boy. It's always nice to see. There we go. As soon as I get the injector down, so by moving the rack here and the rack here, um, it gets down to the point where it can rotate in and then the pin drops in and they drop in quite nicely. One to go. This uh, rocker shaft support is quite tight here. And uh, Adrian is saying because you clamp down here, you squash it this way a little bit. So squashing it this way will bring it back into round to free it up a little bit if you need to. Yeah, there we go. Back in action. All right, whilst having pressed not record somehow, we've now talked these to 90 foot pounds. And Adrian was just saying, um, let's do all our valve clearances and injector timing, injector heights, before we put the fuel lines on because we've got better access, which I think is a great idea. The voice of experience. Oh, I, you know, I've only done one. I've only done one Detroit before. Yeah, but you got it right. So. Well, well, yeah. Because yeah. I would look at that and go, that to me is a valve adjustment. That's what a valve adjustment looks like yep. in my head. Yes, but no, definitely don't do okay. that. So don't touch these? Don't touch those. They, that's just the difference between the two valves. Ah, uh, right. So that's a relative different. adjustment. Yes, a relative adjustment when you first set the head up. From, it's had the head recondition and the valve seats cut. You yep. set all those up. Yep. Then, now, you only adjust the push rods on the... Only adjust the, the push rods, okay. So you can see, because this push rod's up, this side's down, so this injector's right down. Even though these valves are loose, this injector's almost flush, isn't it? So, yep. so yeah, good drag. Yeah, we'll get you a set of no-goes. Yeah. They're just so much nicer. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just for doing Detroit's, it's for any engine, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Look Could at you... this, white and yellow, we've got the two colours. You can still see from when we did the first time. time. Yeah. All right, so there's the, so now we're uh, going to yeah. do the injector on four. Ooh, hitting. The other ones had ground followers. Ah, yes. So, it would, and, yeah. and so you wouldn't think there'd be a huge difference. You'd think it'd be 10,000, but there's like a lot more. You can see sort of. Yeah, yeah, that's well and truly hitting. Yeah. It's not even close. Right, so now you can get in there with your ubi gooby spanners. Uh, big ones lock. Yep. yep. So I want to shorten the rod. Oh, no, 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 I lengthen the rod to bring that down. Yep. Don't I? And then I do the lefty loosey to lengthen as well. Yep. Oh, doesn't as much, does it? Still just hitting. So, so you've got to keep it straight too, not cockeyed. Yeah. Definitely hitting still. 
Mm, so just if it's just hitting, then try doing uh, the lock then up. I still reckon it's so when so when you do the lock then up, it'll go down. Ah, it'll go down a bit because yep. you're lengthening the rod. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're lengthening. Yep. All right, I'll try it. Let's see, Let's see what happens. Uh, and you don't have to hold the rod. It won't. No, they're usually pretty. Well, it's still too high. Yeah, it's hitting. Yeah, yeah, that's all right, but it's good to see. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, lock nut back. Lengthen it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's just catching it? Mm, maybe, it catching maybe too far. Because yeah, it's going to go further again, isn't it? Yeah, so if you want it so it's, let's if go it's back just a little catching bit. it. Yeah, let's go back a little bit. So it's sort of bumping onto it. Yeah. You just get it so it just bumps onto it. Mm, so then I think it's catching. Is it so, catching there? Yeah, it was. It's or I would lock it up. Oh, okay. If you, if you already brought it back a little bit, probably probably yeah, yeah. more Yeah. Put your feet, put a little bit of oil on there if you want. That, yeah, right, just to... See if it's... Still... Is it cat going over it? Not if I push it right down. No. Okay, well, you've just got to go down a smidge or more. Yeah. Oh, no, it looks like it's wiping the oil off just nicely, is it? Yeah, well, it definitely... It should be wiping, just wiping the oil off. Well, I can't feel contact, just wiping no, the... As long as it's... You might not feel contact, but you might feel taking the oil away. It's definitely moving the oil. Yeah, for taking the oil off. But I think I have gone a little bit. I reckon we'll come back with... All right. Yeah, that feels better. I can feel... feel just the, feel, feel the, the top yep. of the... Oh, well, that's what you want to do. Yeah, which I couldn't before. Yep. Beautiful. So, rotate. Next up, I duck down to rotate the crank with a spanner on the front pulley so we can move on and do a different injector and a different set of valves. Oh, yeah. Good compression then, still. Yeah. Oh, that's there. Okay, cool. So, you've got a set of valves there and an injector here. The process then continues three more times. The feeler gauges for the valves and the special tool for the injector. You get the idea, so I won't show you the whole thing, but it really is just rinse and repeat at this point, rotating the crankshaft between each set. With the valve clearances and the injector height set, next job was to take the little protective caps off the fuel injectors and install the fuel lines. With these hoses, one short one, one long one per injector, so if you're going to carry spares, you need two. Oh, no. The real advantage, I think, to this particular tool over a spanner is that you can put it on a torque wrench. All right, the fuel lines are in, torqued up. The sun is setting. Adrian's shutting my wood down. It is time to try and fire this up, see how it goes. Obviously those fuel lines will have drained back entirely. The injectors will have fuel in them, but the fuel lines will be completely empty. So I'm not expecting the very first start to be amazing. But um, hopefully after that, our starting problems are solved. Ready? Yep. Once the rail was full of fuel, it seemed to start just fine. Uh, we had forgotten to run the rack though, so we shut it down and started doing that as the final job of the day. And that's tight. They're all tight, so it's just this one that was a little bit too tight. Right, and holding the others yeah. away. Yep. Okay. Tight. 
tie it now. So if one's tight and the others are loose, it means you're getting full fuel on one only one injector and the others are a little bit behind. Oh, yeah. Got that one, got that one. Oh, there we got it. Right. Nice. Very good. Thank you. All right. So this one is at idle speed, is it? Yep. <laughs> and top speed is shimmed. It's shimmed. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I reckon start him up. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll see what he does. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I reckon about three inches that way. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Don. Don. Yeah. That's too bad, really. Oh, that's good. Now we'll tow the aluminium barge back to Renko's mooring and then take off from there. Uh, long day, but. Good day. Successful. I was quite pleasantly surprised that I didn't notice any real difference in power with the N50 injectors over the original N60, so smaller injectors now. Towing this barge, uh, you know, it's sort of a 40 foot barge, longer than Renko, uh, just felt exactly the same as it did previously, so, so that was good to see. Yeah, it was about now we realised we'd also forgotten to set the buffer screw on the governor, but at least that was a nice simple job to stop that stall from happening. Well, thanks for watching. It's great to have those new injectors in because I did want to go to smaller injectors anyway, but it doesn't actually seem to have completely solved this problem of being hard to start. I think we figured out what it is though, and it turns out because I haven't really been able to afford to fill the tanks like I could previously, um, they're getting quite low. And we believe that the return line probably now enters the tank above the surface of the fuel. This means that as soon as you turn the engine off, the return line just runs down into the tank and air goes back up in. So every time we're starting from having to prime that common rail for the injectors. Theoretically, all I need to do to solve this problem is to put enough fuel in the tanks to get that return line below the surface of the fuel. Uh, of course, with the current fuel prices, that turns out to be quite a lot. Um, I could, of course, extend that down low while the fuel tanks are low, um, so this doesn't happen, but it doesn't stop it running, and it actually is a little bit of a reminder that perhaps the fuel is getting quite low. It is a good idea to keep them full to stop condensation, that kind of thing. So I don't think I'm going to extend it. I think I'm just going to somehow find a way of filling them and seeing if it solves the problem and then keeping them quite full. Anyway, I'll definitely keep you posted. Next week, we'll be back into the Yamaha F70 and getting that back on the water. All right, take care. I'll catch you then. See ya. Come up to the back garden for a change. New things to eat. Well done. Well done for exploring new territory.
getting plenty of greens. It's all right, Daisy. Getting attacked. Don't you worry about that. You like that grass, don't you, Daffy? Well, good on you for being brave and coming all the way up here.